It's a celebration honoring the musical legacy of Tony Bennett. Totally Tony, keeping the music playing is happening on what would have been the 98th birthday of the late icon. And here to tell us more about the show is creator and star of Totally Tony, Jonathan Poritz. Jonathan, thanks so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm so excited to be here. This is so much fun. And so I need to know, how did this come about, this show? Well, it's really interesting. People in the Bay Area who know me, uh, hopefully they know me, they, they're used to seeing me doing Sinatra, Frank Sinatra shows and Rat Pack shows. I played a Frank in the Rat Pack show out of Las Vegas when it came here, traveled the country, so uh, it's all been about Frank Sinatra. When Tony passed, uh, just a year ago this past Sunday, um, I did it, I have a regular gig in Walnut Creek and I put together just a quick little uh, set of Tony songs and about a month later, one of the producers that booked me here, there and wherever said, can you can you put together a Tony Bennett show? And I said, as a matter of fact, I can. So I took it really seriously, much in the way I did with Sinatra to do as much research I could, watch as many Tony Bennett videos. I was always listening to his music. I'm a fan of his. But uh, I had to kind of get out of the tone, out of the Frank Sinatra suit, okay. get myself into, into Tony persona, and uh, really understand the way he, he sang, yeah. which was wonderful. So you are doing this on the celebration of what would have been his 98th birthday. And tell me what people can expect at Totally Tony. So I was very fortunate to have seen Tony Bennett in concert. In fact, my dad is no longer with us on his 80th birthday. So he was born one year after Tony. I took him to see Tony Bennett. He was at the Sonoma uh, Jazz Festival in a big tent. Mm -hmm. And I got to see Tony perform live. And I was just blown away. But the one thing that I've noticed about watching videos of Tony is... He, it's all business. It's all singing. You know, he doesn't tell. He doesn't waste a lot of time telling stories. He didn't waste a lot of time telling stories. I have a couple of stories that I like to tell. I call them my six degrees of Tony Bennett because there are connections that I've had with him, yeah. including his drummer Harold Jones, who I've worked with and was on my first CD. He lives in in Marin, and in fact, he's going to be there on Saturday, his birthday, to help celebrate. So uh, I just uh, once I got thought about putting the show together, I, I decided I would try to emulate it as much as possible. My musical director is Richard Nelson Hall. We call him Sir Richard Nelson Hall because <laughs> he's from England. And uh, he basically took a lot of those recordings and he got the transcriptions essentially so we could create the actual arrangements of those songs. So, you know, if you didn't know any better, hopefully you'll come to my show and you say, my God, it's the Tony Bennett show and, and you'd feel really good about it. So yeah, that's the amazing. Plan. I know that it's going to be so fun. Um, and why do you think that it's important to keep his legacy alive? Well, it's really interesting. I, I'm I firmly, I started just like every other person my age singing rock and roll. The Beatles were a huge influence on me. But I think gradually as people get older, the songs that Tony sang, the songs that Frank Sinatra sang, the Great American Songbook, the lyrics of those songs speak to what we experience in life. And eventually they all come around to it. So Tony was, I, you know, he was really like the, maybe the last of, the, of that generation of crooners mm -hmm. and so it's so important that we keep his legacy alive and thanks to you know to clubs like Feinstein's at, at the Nico and other places we you know where they celebrate that music we get to keep it alive yeah and it's amazing there's always you know we had you know Michael Bublé help take another generation uh, and so every time you think it's gonna start to dwindle someone else comes up on a big level and and keeps the music happening and I, I I just think you know in fact if you listen to all the commercials they're always pulling songs from from that era fly me to the moon you know yeah. you hear it and a lot of kids they don't know what that is they think it's a current song so which is great yeah do you have any favorite songs I know <laughs> that's probably a really hard question I get asked that all the time yeah and I would say it's like trying to say, which kid of yours do you like better? <laughs> I can't pick. You can't of pick. the Tony Bennett songs, I will say this. I love them all, but probably the one that I, that I do in the show is The Shadow of Your Smile. I was very fortunate. I grew up, even though I was singing Beatles songs, my, my parents listened to this music. They were huge Sinatra fans. And my dad had a couple of Tony Bennett albums that he would listen to over and over again. And there's that one song, The Shadow of Your Smile, I would hear all the time. But the song that got me hooked and made me want to change the title of the show. Mm -hmm. the, the producer who originally booked me put it, the Tony, it was called the Tony, uh, Tony Bennett Songbook. Mm -hmm. I watched a video from his 90th 
birthday celebration at Radio City Music Hall. And he sang, How Do You Keep the Music Playing? Mm -hmm. Which I've heard countless times. I've heard his version of it. it. Happened to be my dad's favorite song of the ones I do, but I did it a different version. But when I watched Tony Bennett sing that song and I watched the audience uh, react to it, and the thing about Tony, he was so humble. So when the audience erupted in applause mm -hmm. afterwards, he, he actually looked surprised. You could see it on his face. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's how I came up with changing the name of the show to Totally Tony, yeah. Keeping the Music Playing. Well, I think it's totally fitting, right? Because you're yes. keeping the music playing, you're keeping his legacy alive. I think that, you know, it'd be remiss of me to ask you, to not ask you if you could give us a little sample. Could yes. I hear your voice? Well, we have to be careful. So I'm, I'm picking a song that's not in the show, okay. but it is a song that is also in the public domain. Okay. But uh, we're going to have some fun. And the actual name of the song is called Oh Lady Be Good. But I'm going to do a little twist. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, let's hear it. Sweet and lovely, Jessica Wills. Oh, Jessica Wills, be good to me. I'm just so awfully misunderstood. Oh, Jessica Wills, be good to me. Please, won't you have some pity? I'm all alone in this big city. I'm just a lonesome babe in the wood. Oh, Jessica Wills, oh, lady, be good. Oh, Jessica Wills, be good to me. And you have been. Oh, that was so beautiful. I love that. Thank you. Tell me details of where people can catch the show. So we're going to be at Feinstein's at the Nico, which is uh, right on Mason and uh, between uh, O'Farrell and Ellis. And it's... Uh, which it's FeinsteinsSF.com. And very special, if you're watching this show, Kron, K-R-O-N is the access code, and you'll get 25% off tickets. That's going to be good from now until Sunday. Amazing. The show is August 2nd, which is Friday, August 3rd. Both shows are at 8 o'clock, and I am hoping we're going to be completely sold out. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for giving me a little serenade. It's so special. And My thank pleasure. you for the code discount for our audience. I love that. And I just want to wish you an amazing show, and thanks for being here to tell us about thank it. Thank you, Jessica. Yes, of course.